Let's think about the conductors in electrostatic equilibrium. Um, what, uh, what we mean by this, we will analyze the motion of free charges inside the conductor, which are in electrostatic equilibrium. And we will take metals as conductors. And the first statement that that if a, a metal or a conductor is in electrostatic equilibrium, that means at every point or in the inside the conductor, the volume of the conductor, the electric field must be equal to zero. So let's we have this conductor and this gray uh, region is uh, the volume of the conductor. And think about uh, the counterintuitive argument that the electric field is not equal to zero. So imagine if uh, inside the conductor the electric field is not equal to zero. We have then, uh, for example, the electric field lines. And the uh, property of the conductors is why we, do we call the conductors? Because there are free charges moving inside the conductor. So if the electric field is not equal to zero, then the free charges, uh, the electrons inside the conductors, because of this non-zero electric field, will move. So if, if there is a, a non-zero electric field, then that, that means the uh, sum of the electrons that see these non-zero electric fields will move. But this is uh, in violation that the conductor is in electrostatic equilibrium. What we mean by electrostatic equilibrium? It is that all the charges, all the free charges must be in steady state, must be in motionless state. So this uh, violates, if there is an electric field inside the conductor, this violates the, uh, uh, the equilibrium condition that the charges must stay at rest. So uh, the statement is that the electric field must be equal to zero inside everywhere the conductor. So we have uh, A is equal to zero. And what happens if we charge a conductor, if we put extra charges, okay? If we put extra charges, let's say if extra uh, plus charges, where do these charges go? Do they distribute themselves everywhere uniformly inside the conductor or do they go anywhere else? So <coughs> imagine these extra charges, uh, take two of these extra charges, uh, inside a conductor, okay. Uh, even if, by the way, even if we charge uh, a conductor for a sh very short amount of time, typically this is in the order of nanoseconds. Uh, once you charge the conductor with extra charge, again these charges will distribute themselves uh, on or inside a conductor, so that uh, the, all the charges will be at at rest. After a very short period of time, uh, even if you charge the conductor, the conductor will reach the electrostatic, electrostatic equilibrium condition, condition in a very short amount of time. So imagine uh, two of these charges is, go is going inside the conductor like this, having some uh, distance in between them. But the thing that if you think these two charges then because of the electrostatic force between the like charges, they will repel each other. And they will repel each other until they are at rest. Okay? So that means uh, in electrostatic equilibrium, uh, because of the uh, forces that uh, moves the charges all the time, the, in electrostatic equilibrium, the charge cannot go inside. Uh, Otherwise, if they go inside somewhere, then they will feel their electrostatic force, repulsion force, and they will move in opposite direction. But this again violates the condition that the, the charges should be in electrostatic equilibrium. So that means uh, the charge, somehow, they will distribute themselves on the surface. Okay, Because on the surface, on the boundary, uh, there is no any uh, place to go, there is no any room to move anymore uh, and they will uh, be outer surface, they, they will be uh, residing or they will be uh, 
localizing themselves without motion, without moving, on the outside surface of a conductor. If the, conduct, if the conductor has a volume, then this is the case. Even if the conductor has some cavity inside, uh, this is the same situation. But what happens to the uh, uh, inner surface? We will analyze this later. Okay, so <clears throat> by this simple argument that the, if there is an extra charge inside the conductor on the conductor, then these charges sh uh, must locate themselves on the outer surface. We will uh, prove this result by using a Gauss's law like this. Let's pick up an imaginary Gaussian surface which is right at the boundary of the conductor. It is the boundary of the conductor, so you take uh, this Gaussian surface. Uh, if you think the Gauss's law that uh, the flux, electric flux, through this imaginary boundary surface, uh, the result of the flux will be the charge inside divided by epsilon zero. But you think that since there is no electric field inside the conductor because of this is the condition coming from the electrostatic equilibrium because we know that electric field is always zero everywhere inside the conductor that means you will have a zero flux through this imaginary Gaussian surface which is just uh, right at the boundary of the conductor that means the net charge inside the conductor must be equal to zero okay so uh, by using the Gauss's law and the, by using the electrostatic equilibrium condition uh, saying that the electric field is equal to zero inside the conductor then uh, as soon as you take this Gaussian surface right at the boundary of the conductor the Gaussian surface, the flux through the Gaussian surface will be equal to zero. The Gauss's law says that uh, this flux is equal to net charge inside the surface divided by epsilon zero but since the flux is equal to zero, that means the net charge inside the conductor is equal to zero. Okay. So we have this result, the net charge inside the conductor is, is equal to zero. Whether, uh, even if the conductor has an extra charge or not, whether the conductor is neutral or charged, this is true always. So if you have extra charge, that means the charges must go right at the outer surface of the conductor. Okay. So 